Hi everyone, I'm Crystal Gomez and this is Herb Verb, where we discuss all things health related. Each week I invite new guests to share their knowledge and experiences. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe to support the channel. So I'd like to introduce you all to my first guest. She means a lot to me. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Um, she believed in me from the very start and continues to do so. So I'd like to welcome you all to Katie Dobbish, my personal tutor and mentor. Oh. So hi, Katie. So we're going to talk a bit about yourself and what you do. First of all, I'd like to sort of go into your background and yeah, yeah. if you can tell us a little bit about what brought you to where you are now sure, sure. what led you to alternative health yeah yeah okay. and education as well which is you know yeah. a major part of what you do thank you crystal crystal's a wonderful been a wonderful student and um, I always find students are really inspiring and she's going to be a fantastic practitioner so I my I was always surrounded my mother was a around in the sort of swinging 60s um sort of I, oh, I was born then and she was a, she was very into yoga and alternative therapies and I lived in London and we used to go to the Victoria and there was this sort of natural health show once a year and that was always you know very very trendy very sort of alternative and mother was always talking about yoga and nutrition so I had it around me as a child and I also had a bit of a an inkling to sort of go, go into forests and hug trees and silly things like that. But I had a botany background, but it was always there. I lived in London, so it was a bit city. So whenever I was let out, my, 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 I used to stay with my nan and she'd say, well, where's Katie? Oh, she's probably hugging trees or something. So <laughs> always going on around me. And then um, I, uh, I've always been interested in sort of esoteric things. I did a bit of astrology. I love all that. And I was very interested in nutrition. I had children and, and uh, you know, I, be, I became a vegetarian for years. And I actually just, I'm not, I eat everything now. But uh, I was always very interested in making nice, healthy foods. And my, ki my kids, as they grew up, they would say, oh, come and see my mum because she's got cures for everything. Um, so that sort of went on. Um, and then I, my children grew up, and went off to university, and then I thought I'd do my degree now because I didn't do a degree when I was um, younger because I ran off away with my ex. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I came, I came back to do my degree when I was forty years old, um, and I'm now fifty-eight, healthy. I don't ever go to the doctors. I started off doing my degree at Westminster University, which unfortunately has finished. I did complementary theories and then was very inspired by the nutrition and the herbal medicine pathways. But then I studied herbal medicine and I qualified in 2003 and then fell straight into teaching. I ran a practice in London for quite a while and then I moved up to Lincolnshire. London's wonderful. I've been there 40 years. I was ready for the country. So then I started teaching at Lincoln University. What a practice. That was it really. So it was always been there in my head. I did it I did much later in life. Medicine is amazing. I very rarely go to the doctor and uh, treat myself and my family with herbs and nutrition, diet as well, which is a big passion of mine. Yeah, and it must be so nice to sort of be in a place where you can take your health into your own hands. And I think it means something as well when you can share that with your loved ones. That's something ultimately that we, we strive to do as mothers. We want to sort of look after our children and, and make sure they're healthy and happy. And to be able to nourish that and be a part of that for them and share that with them so they can then pass that on to their own children is something really special. So it's amazing. I mean, once you get into this sort of health medicine and nutrition, I mean, my daughter actually does a lot of healthy nutrition. She started a company and she makes very nutritious uh, sort of healthy snacks and fasts. And things. My son is an amazing chef as well. So he's just brilliant cook. So cooking and eating food has always been, you know, part of my sort of family life. And I think that's really important for children as well to get them interested in eating real food because absolutely that you know most chronic diseases I still think begin in the gut and children are brought up sort of to, to you know grab crisps and sweets and biscuits and rather than sort of think oh I'll have that nice apple uh, <laughs> so I you know yeah. that's really important uh, to me so it is to you as well because I yeah. think it's when you're young it starts your family life and yeah. I think I've mm -hmm. managed to persuade all my family to not take too many bugs and to take sort of herbs come to me first for a choice be very liberating it's such a 
an amazing journey and it, and it's just continually learning and as I'm teaching people like you Crystal lovely students come into my life and and I, I try and teach them something and then they you teach me things as well and you never stop learning on this yeah. thing. when I'm a herbalist you you're all every year you have to keep up to date mm -hmm. uh, with everything you know all, all the uh, new research out there so yeah I'm very lucky and I've, I've worked a lot alongside a few herbal manufacturing companies and mm -hmm. I've been involved with a lot of different companies helping them to formulate remedies and, and different ideas where we can take herbal medicine. So that's really lucky. Yeah. I'm very lucky in this journey, really good. Yeah, and so going on that, um, talking about companies that you've worked with, um, I know that you're you're quite famous for your turmeric capsules. <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about those? Oh, gosh, those, those, those are amazing, actually. Yeah, I sort of stumbled on this formula, um, which I make, and I have them made up. I mean, I think probably that's my biggest thing I do, Crystal. I mean, it's just, so all the herbs I teach and learn about them, and then they go out and sell them in shops. So there are combinations, there's, there's, I call them herbal anti-inflammatory capsules, and they are got turmeric. Um, I use whole turmeric rather than standardised curcumin. It just worked very well. But it's also got boswellia, which is frankincense. So there's turmeric, frankincense, and something called trichodou, which is um, an Ayurvedic blend of black pepper, long pepper, and ginger. The trichodou helps the absorption of the turmeric. So in lots of clinical research, it, it, it's a huge amount. It's very difficult for the body to take in. Um, it's not turmeric's not very bioavailable, so it's very difficult for your yeah. body to take it in. But with the with the trichotou, the the long pepper and black pepper, um, that really helps. And also the frankincense in there is very anti-inflammatory. So I've got anybody at, from sort of you know, youngish athletes take it take this combination to help inflammation. Yeah. Uh, my family seem to be athletes except me uh, and then I've got lo lots of older people doing it taking it and it was really nice a lady emailed me the other day and said that she hadn't been able to knit for years because she had really crippling arthritis yeah. and she did three a day of these capsules and now she's knitting again which I just there thought goes. wow that's so amazing yeah. and so that's just lovely it's it's so nice herbal medicine so they are very good but oh, obviously I don't suggest everybody takes them you know if you're taking any medication always consult someone like Crystal or myself to check. Um, but yeah, uh, they're very good. And, and I'm, I formulate these and I, I do sell thousands of them. And <laughs> I've used them myself. An old injury in my shoulder, I fell once and I and it, I never did get it repaired. And yeah. if I don't take the, my little anti-inflammatory capsules, I take three. Sometimes I have a bit of a gap, but if I don't take them, I can start creaking. So yeah, they are pretty good. But th there's lots of other wonderful things you can make Absolutely. in them. Yeah. And, and and this is it you know there's so much out there to share and and that's what drew to doing this I wanted to share the knowledge that we have as herbalists and alternative therapists um to the world the sort of knowledge that we have and you know it's, it's there for everyone it's there for the taking yeah. um and I suppose there's not a lot of people out there that know that so you know it'd be good to to get get the word out there and I think you'll be a great ambassador for herbal medicine so I'm really looking <laughs> forward to seeing the old podcasts and youtube books so i think yeah. it's great i mean yeah. this you could talk for hours we could talk for hours could we talk about diet we could talk about definitely the, the so yeah. yeah i mean it's it's getting the diet right finding the right sort of herbs that are useful anything really i mean think about herbal medicine in the old days people were if they were unlucky they went to see a doctor if they were lucky they went to see an old herbalist practicing yeah. <laughs> actual medicine and usually they did better than the ones who were given sort of drugs and that, that to a certain yeah. extent I mean I'm not saying that all drugs are uh, I mean a lot of you know life-saving drugs antibiotics in the right are good certain drugs are very you know positive but if you can find a sort of more natural approach first I think that's really useful most medications a lot of them do come from originally sort of, sort of drugs come from herbs anyway so they've yeah. just been synthesized and the majority of the world's population certainly in sort of Asia a lot of people still rely on herbal medicine and nutrition as their sort of main pathway to health so that, that's very true going back to your daughter and um, you mentioned yeah. that she um does healthy snacks so yeah does she have a company she did have a, a business uh, but then that that changed so then they just she, her and her partner do this sort of athletics and outdoor athletics but they do a lot of um they're called Rome athletics but they do she does a lot of bespoke kind of meal sort of things for people so and she yeah so lots of different things she does these energy balls and 
she does these juices so they're sort of like different days of the week she's taken on your knowledge then of nutrition she's <laughs> a brilliant cook both both my children are probably better cook. well no actually i think but they are they do they do um a lot of cooking and That's diet great. but yeah it's it's great it's it's yeah. lovely very rare you know if, if we're going to cook we we tend to we don't very rarely sort of get takeaway well I might get the odd takeaway but generally it's speaking, nice to not have to cook sometimes occasionally but <laughs> I like to, to experiment I was talking to a patient earlier on today with um cancer and we were about the sulfurophanes that mm. that you get from the brassicas the cabbages and the broccoli and yeah. I'm saying by having more brass sprouts and cabbages and broccoli because there's constituents yeah. in there called sulfurophane that are actually very anti-carcinogenic so there's wonderful things that you can talk to patients and they get really excited and they write them down. And Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's so nice. It's yeah. lovely. Yeah. Do that. And your knowledge and doing our degree at, at Lincoln, it, it, it's it's just like you said earlier on, you just keep learning and learning more. I mean, you'll, you'll find it very difficult to ever read a normal novel again. Someone said to me the other day, you read novels. I'm like, eh. Mm. mostly to watch or is it you try so much to learn I mean um I think since I started doing this degree I, I find it really difficult to sit down and watch something that isn't giving me knowledge <laughs> giving me giving me information I, I feel like oh I could be I could be doing something else right now <laughs> it's very difficult isn't it, it yeah it, it, it is especially if you're in my parlor he's always wanting to watch some film or something and as soon as he's yeah. Like going, just scrolling on the Netflix for anything to do with, you know, sort of alternative medicine or, or <laughs> you know, oh, God, so even, even, um, what's his name? My, Michael, oh, I've forgotten his name now. The, the guy does all the BBC medical programs. I like that. And, okay. Or even like inside the factory, at least you're learning something about food. You're, you're learning yeah. about some of these medical programs on the BBC. Sometimes they're horrendous, but sometimes they're quite informative. And I just, that will always be my go-to, you know, now. I completely share that with you where my partner just wants to, he, he teaches all day and he just wants to ch just, just chill out. <laughs> he wants yeah. to relax and he wants to switch the brain off. And, and I, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really difficult. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you are, it, it doesn't get any easier, Crystal. <laughs> yeah, you study all you want to. Oh, you're, there's so much on YouTube now. That's the great thing about, yeah. uh, I've noticed since the lockdown, which has been obviously horrendous, but there's been so many more videos out there and courses and yeah. free online workshops and yeah. always something. And just before you came on, something came in and it was a quick bit of stuff. Oh, and you, you know, half an hour here, half an hour there. So there's lots, lots so, of things out there. So many videos on my watch later list. Yeah. Um, because I'm so busy with the course, um, I just... I, I look at things and they come up and I'll say, oh, I'll watch that later. And yeah. I, don't, I don't always get round to it, but usually when I'm eating, I might put one of my watch oh. watch later viewings on and I, I just sort of sit and, and again, I'm learning whilst yeah. I'm eating. So, yeah. I think when I was a student, I used to have a, because it was a long time ago, I used to record the lectures on little mini recorders. And when I was learning, I used to listen to them as well. So that's yeah. nice. That's a really good idea, actually. That's quite nice. As you can record some lectures on Teams, can't you? So you can listen. To yeah, but I, I think for me, it's getting around to doing that, especially yeah. towards the end. It's been just chasing after one thing to next that I need to do <laughs> and then tick it off. <laughs> yeah, it's been three years. So three years you do the degree. Yeah, three years. Yeah. yeah. Three years of, of feeling up and down, but I'm still here. Yeah, you've done well, yeah. <laughs> and taking patience and it's a great degree you start to take patience and it's wonderful to see people like Chris, like yourself um you first start coming into clinic and taking patients you get really nervous you think oh i'm never going to be able to do this or oh, i'm never going to all those names those botanical names that was the first thing for me i said i didn't think i was signing up to learn latin yeah they just sort of now i know those i know the botanical names before i know the common names which is quite bizarre <laughs> And that's the thing is when people say to me oh do you have this that and I'm like well what's that I just need to know what the botanical we learn yeah. the, we learn the Latin and, and when you when you're dispensing you're using Latin terminology and the medical terminology well that's always quite hard beginning to learn isn't it but yeah well, just especially have no background it's learning everything from the ground up and it, it's a lot but yeah. it's, it's so nice when you can say oh yeah I actually yeah I know that now I know. Is it? <laughs> Isn't it? I, I said to I said to the students at the beginning. I, I said it to you at the beginning. Oh, you'll you'll by the end of the three years, you'll you'll just know all the 
all the herbs. Yeah, I don't know how many herbs you know. It must be about up to 300. I, I can't yeah. actually count it. I counted them, no. Isn't there? Yeah, there's a, a lot. I mean, each system, we, we've sort of, well, you, they don't even necessarily go in systems, but you for each system, if you think about it, herbs of the heart, they could be sort of 20, 20 odd digestion herbs, 20, 30 odd. I mean, and then some of the herbs can be used sort of as in different ways. So, yeah, there's, there's, there are quite a few. So, speaking about going into education in your 40s, first of all, how did that feel for you? And, and I, I relate to it completely because our stories seem quite similar, you know, having children and, and, and studying and, and, and being in your 40s. That's all sort of. You know no, where I'm at at the moment. 20. I think you're still in your twenties, Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, how how was that? How was that journey for you? And and what brought you to, into education after um, sort of studying? Oh, you know, right. late, sort of later on. Yes, yes, yes. Um, well, my children have grown up, and they were well. I think Larry left when was leaving home. It was still do her a levels and i just sort of was in london and i just did the do I, I sort of just fell into it as you do I, I think i applied and then just started doing it um and that worked really well because i think it's quite i mean you you've had younger children and that is that is quite hard <laughs> so you need a lot of support um with younger ones mine were a bit older but one went off traveling and and there was lots of various issues going on so that was always a bit of a challenge um, finding time to study yeah. was hard uh, when there were children around, and and that was quite quite challenging. Um, but I mean, I managed it, and um, I think the last year is always quite challenging, and that was quite difficult. But then when I finished my degree, I didn't really want to go. I didn't want to stop. So I think I got a job in the university that I would teach. I was I did my degree, and I got a job being like the clinic manager um oh, well nice. like the job we've got a clinic manager at lincoln so i did all the ordering the dispensing and supervised about well quite a few years actually and then i started teaching uh i i got very friendly with the nutrition we did a degree in nutritional therapy at that at that university and i was very friendly with them and then they asked me to run a module for the nutritional therapist so actually my first and also I did for a company called ION Institute of Nutrition I did a few weekends in sort of introduction to her medicine so I could, kind of got into teaching that way so I never left I never left I just I was at Westminster and I carried on um, and I sort of started I started to almost sort of teaching and then doing a practice at the same time but I I never really left teaching I just sort of sort of went straight in you, you aren't supposed to do that normally normally you you have to go off and practice for a few years, but I kind of sort of slipped in the back way by doing sort of teaching, teaching the nutritional therapists and then teaching clinics. It's a long, <laughs> to think I did it. but yeah, so it just, and then I it just continued really. So I, 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 I was a bit, I, I taught a few universities and then came up to Lincolnshire, which is, it was fantastic. Fell in love with Lincolnshire <laughs> and never really went back to London. I do go on vacation to see my kids and family, but the University of Lincoln is now, well, it was University of Lincoln, then Lincoln College took the course on, and now we're accredited by the Open University. Yeah, it's been brilliant, really, because I think we are one of the only universities doing um, a degree in herbal medicine now. When I was studying in 2001, I think there were quite a few different universities. It's a shame they've gone, but lucky for us that we have this amazing degree and lots of applicants every year, and we, people like, Crystal, come out of it. <laughs> I'm very... Oh, thank you. I don't know if that answered your question. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, as sort of going back on what you were saying, it is difficult when you're studying, let alone doing a degree, and, and you've got children. And I guess I'm probably um, making it harder for myself because I've decided to educate mine from home now. So, yeah, it, it's been challenging, but I've got as far as I am now, and they've been here the whole time. So... Wow. Um, yeah, uh, and, and they will become part of my journey because they've got a lot of they've got a lot to give. They, they're very keen on being on camera. Well, Watch nice. out for this space. <laughs> I do. Definitely. 
herbalists like you, Crystal. So yeah, yeah, I think I think they, they are budding herbalists. Cookery, cookery together, so teach them sort of, and they'll understand mm -hmm. about and picking herbs and making nice herbal teas and that'd be lovely won't it yeah and I've been teaching my 17 year old and he's a boy and they, they're not always keen on being in the kitchen but he's quite happy to be in the kitchen and he's asked to learn and so I've been teaching him I've sort of been on an elimination journey myself in terms of food um because, uh, when we first met if you remember but I I did have quite bad eczema and um, yeah. my neck was covered in eczema and that's all gone yeah. and that's all sort of learning what it is I can and cannot eat with herbs as well. It's been great sort of learning and, and it's made me look at food in a different way. I've tried different ways of eating and, and I'm sort of starting to learn what, what's best for me now. And I've had to learn about different foods and, and how can, you can incorporate that into cooking. And I find that it's really difficult, especially if you have to eliminate a lot of the typical staples that people are used to eating, you know, your bread and your pasta and your rice and, and and I've learned how to cook without those things so that is something that moving forward I will be looking into in more depth and hopefully sharing with everyone um so sort of a lot of recipe ideas and yeah wow. yeah that's something I'm really sort of keen on doing because it's so difficult you know if you've got to do that from scratch if you you know there's so much out there on the internet but it's finding out what it is that you can do yeah in your elimination so that's it's this whole new thing you get gluten-free you get vegan you get all these different diets but not all of them cater for if someone can't have specific foods so it's knowing what you can eat if you can't eat certain things and so yeah, yeah I've been sort of looking into that a lot yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> some of these gluten-free products though um, they don't look that healthy the ingredients on them no, no. Um, some of them are very sort of mass reduced I remember and what is it, Greg's vegan sausage rolls or somebody was talking to me the other day. Sometimes people think that they have a healthy diet and it's actually not. They're just replacing things with other things that are just not good. So it's all about getting raw ingredients and trying to minimise things from packets, isn't it, Crystal? Absolutely. And I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned that as well. It is something that, that that's the first thing that people do if they um, decide for the reason it is, whether it's to do with the health or you know their own sort of views, when they look at certain foods they want to eat or certain diets that they want to do, um, and yeah. they tend to sort of um, look at things that they can eat. And then there's a lot of stuff out there that, when it's categorised into certain diets, it, it's not that it's not the best thing. It's really yeah. not the best thing. And you think you're doing the best thing for yourself and for your health, and, and it's not always the case. So I completely agree with you, Katie. That it's really important to look at you know the, the foods in their natural form and 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 how you can incorporate that into your into your everyday eating oh i'm looking forward to seeing all your interviews and your interview and stuff as well so that'd be great yeah. and we'll get to see some of your children on these videos absolutely they're very keen on on showing their faces oh. they, they want to be they want to be youtube tubers yeah. <laughs> well looking forward to learning they're always wanting to learn so it, it's brilliant yeah so Will you be in part of your home educating? Do you do some sort of herbal medicine? Yes, yeah, so whenever I'm we're out and about, if I see something that I'm familiar with, I will tell them. And, yeah. and they, they go, mm, yeah. <laughs> and, but I tell them every time. Yeah. Eventually, yeah, they start to point stuff out. Oh, that's, yeah, and that's that. And they, yeah. we know the guinea pigs love dandelion leaves. So, yeah, they, they're quite keen on picking for them. Oh, now I took my granddaughter for a herb walk the other day and she was very excited. Yarrow, she likes yarrow. So that's Achillea oh. millifolium. It's milli, many, many bees. She was, oh. She's very interested. My yeah. grand, not so much my grandson, my granddaughter was very interested in, and the dandelion and the self-heal and, <laughs> and trees. And we, we go and pick the lime blossom where she where she is and, nice. and she's excited. And we pick them all. I said, now we're going to make a medicine that helps you to sleep. Oh, wow. And she loved that. So oh, and that's brilliant. Sit under the lime blossom tree, uh, sort of meditate, close her eyes. Yeah, she loved it. So yeah, it's really nice to be able to. And then you can bring the science into it as well with the kids as well, can't you? So there's quite a lot of science in, in herbal medicine, so that that's useful too. Yeah, they've started learning about the body actually because oh, they. Yeah. I think they saw that I I, I was I was doing stuff and it, it must have sort of entered into their brain without them sort of like subconsciously. My um, eight year old said, "Oh, I'd like to learn about body," <laughs> and I was like, "Really?" 
<laughs> bought some books that were, were relevant for them and, and he has one that he can read and I have a sort of a flat pop out type one that for the five year old. So I, yeah. So we sort of sit and read that to them and, and, and they, they find it really interesting. A couple of times they go, Ooh, what's that? And generally they're quite good. <laughs> brains, model brains and various things. As they get older they'll probably get them some chemistry sets and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They, they've got some science sets that they've oh, done, done a few experiments with and, yeah. and they absolutely love those yeah That's they're awesome. very keen on making things um, we made oobleck out of cornflour and water and food coloring and they had the colors that they like so they were playing with this oobleck it's quite messy yeah uh, <laughs> but it's easy to clean up because when it dries it just it's like powder so oh, you right. just mess it away um, but it looks tragic when you first see it <laughs> um, all over my glass table. There was just like, it looked like someone had just thrown paint all over it. Um, but once it dried, it literally just lifted off and you could just wipe it away. Uh, just yeah. it off and it, it, it's I, I suppose really home educating kids is quite messy. Yeah, it can be. Uh, <laughs> because they like, they like to learn messy play. They, you know, yeah. they like to be adventurous. So they like to get their hands dirty. Most of the time, I think my five-year-olds are not very keen on on messy hands. So something that you're very into, and I, I'd like to sort of bring this up, and, and that's the gut microbiome, because you haven't mentioned it, Katie, and I know that it's, it's, it's your thing, so you, you, we have to talk about it. I do talk about it a lot. So I teach nutrition at Lincoln, and obviously the big topic has been the microbiome. Um I mean, it's it's out there now. But when I first started teaching nutrition, it wasn't the, the big thing that it is now. And it is so important in sort of many health conditions. You know, I mean, we always say, you know, all diseases start in the gut. So microbiome is your gut flora. So this is your sort of the, the bacteria, the good and the bad bacteria. We, you know, we're made up of, of this huge ecological garden of bacteria inside us and it's not just in our guts it's on our skin um all over our face everywhere you've got this bacteria um and it's all about keeping you know having a diverse having a, a sort of a wide range of bacteria so to have optimum health you need to have sort of the you know your in balance um this sort of your gut microbiome so a lot of a lot of conditions from Anything in the gut, sort of, you know, dysbiosis, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, anything sort of digestive related can be to do with the microbiome. But also um, some of sort of mental health issues, depression, there's links to the sort of the bacteria in your gut not being happy. Um, so that's also being linked to a lot of chronic inflammatory conditions are all related so it's really important when treating people to to make sure that you know to assess how their gut is and sometimes I you know I talk a, a lot to students about probiotics and prebiotics and you know bowel movements we're very excessive uh, bowel movements in herbal medicine and yeah. so <laughs> You've got to have sort of probiotics and prebiotics. So I talk a lot about things like sauerkraut and kefir. And I don't know if you, people, I'm sure your people have heard that, but even live yogurt, a good live yogurt um, and things like kimchi and sauerkraut and fermented foods um, and th even things like sourdough bread. So, yeah, I, I mean, gosh, <laughs> it's so it's much. a big topic i am a bit i'm a bit interested in in that i mean even to to do with things like if you're sort of they're linking it now to obesity and if you're overweight it can be to do with the bacteria in your gut so you've got more of the bacteria that like to eat lots of things like old, after a big meal they want to eat chocolate and, then, and you think well why am i like that but it can be your bacteria so it's all about getting that right and sort of trying to get that back into balance yeah yeah so there's a lot, lot of communication going on with the body that we're not fully aware of um and that sort of you know with the, the gut and the brain connection and and yeah. with serotonin being made in the gut um it, a lot of people aren't aware of it and and so yeah. they don't think there's a link between their brain and, and what's going on in their gut um but i guess even if on on a, an emotional level if you're tense and 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 you're you're feeling anxious you feel it in your gut you know, yeah. and, and a lot of a lot of tension that's been held there. And so, just talking about what you were saying about the bacteria in the gut, um, yeah. 
So for the viewers out there, um, can you explain a little bit more about the prebiotics? Because I think some people get confused with how with probiotics and prebiotics. Probiotics are, they, 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 they range from things like live yogurt. Um, to, you, I mean, you can buy these probiotic drinks like Yakult and Actimel, but they tend not to be as good because they often have sugar in them yeah. <laughs> and they're not so good. So uh, I'm very very keen on things like kefir which is a natural probiotic um, you can make it yourself or kombucha which is my favorite as well kombucha um, I make this Chris have you seen my scobies yes you've made kombucha as well I, I had a baby the bacteria I guess you know with the gut some foods can be quite high histamine and your body's in yes. a state of high histamine um, so those foods can irritate you and so I discovered that in my journey with oh. doing the gut microbiome increasing all of my bacteria foods and it wasn't it didn't completely agree with me um but since having an intolerance test I found out that what foods were irritating me and causing this to happen in my body so right. anything that was good for me yes generally it, it was it was causing a reaction in my body because my body was already in a highly inflammatory state right. so it was just things that would generally be good for you were triggering okay. me and so now my journey is to sort of eliminate the foods that are, are irritating me and then um, fixing my gut microbiome, getting my, my gut in optimum health so yeah. that I can then in reintroduce some of the good foods back into my yeah. eating. Um, and, and that's sort of what I'm on at the moment. Um, but I found that that's the best thing to do for myself. But I mean, I completely agree that yeah. the whole, you know, fixing your gut microbiome and, you know, as Hippocrates said, all disease begins in the gut and I completely agree with that and and I tell everybody that number one you know yeah. anything that's going on with you fix that first sort it out but I mean like you're saying with the high histamine unfortunately some of the fermented foods are if you've got you know a high histamine if that upsets you then you have to be very careful and yeah sometimes if you do tell people to have sort of lots of probiotics um then it can, they can get they can get a lot worse so, so you have to be very careful as well and be very gentle so that's why we also have the things called prebiotics which are um things like leek and garlic and foss which is um fermented well certain types of constituents that actually feed the good bacteria as well so yeah. getting that balance right so you may be if you give somebody just loads of probiotics it may not also be helpful so you need to look at the whole diet getting getting everything into sort of perspective but, but working, there are people that do go off and get their sort of microbiome analysed um, and you can mm. get that done. But it's quite it's a quite complicated procedure and uh, I think it, it's easier to, to just sort of just gently see what you're eating and just try to introduce the sort of biotics and prebiotics in your diet if, you can, if that's causing it. And like you were saying about the gut brain, I mean, we've got this nervous system the, called the enteric nervous system, which is our gut uh, nervous system. And um, actually, when the brain and the, 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 the gut brain were, were came from the same kind of neural crest, and, and actually you often feel things in your, in your tummy or your gut before you feel things in your brain. So it's very important to listen to your gut and that sort of gut brain access gut feeling is important so <laughs> yeah. so that that's where that vagus nerve you know I was talking about the vagus nerve Chris. yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm glad you brought that up <laughs> about the vagus nerve so so the, the vagus nerve is this sort of cranial nerve 10 that's bi-directional but it comes from some up in your head right goes down to the down to your gut and it's and it's bi-directional so having a microbiome affects your sort of brain by this via the vagus nerve as well so that again um, and there's lots of things you can do to activate the vagus nerve as well if you've got suffering from shall go down throughout the, that but now there are a few so there are some general ones that we yeah. can um, yeah. share <laughs> um, yeah. and and they're things like gargling Gar um, singing hot showers my favorite cold showers yeah are you doing um, those Crystal, I am, yes. Yeah, so I have my normal shower and then I whisk it over to the cold at the yeah. end. Um, and it's really good for the hair as well. It sort of keeps it um, shiny and, and well moisturised. But yeah, I, I do that um, yeah. and, and as I can tolerate. And then, <laughs> but it's quite refreshing actually. 
Uh, at first, it was a bit. Um, it's good for your system. That shock's good for the immune system. It is. Yes. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's like going for a run. So yeah. you know, you get your heart rate up when yeah. you go for a, a run uphill. Um, mm -hmm. it, it has the same sort of effect, and and it's it's good for your age as well. So you know, I think so, keep, yeah. it keeps you young. Slim, I think cold showers. I'm a, that's for me that that that's the one Vegas thing that's really important. But uh, also meditating and humming and gargling. But you've also got to do them all with a p altruistic thoughts, with positive thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Gargling, meditating. <laughs> You've got to think nice thoughts as well. That's very All true. Vegas nerve. So yeah, another thing we talk about. Yeah. Yeah, so that is yeah. So I think we've covered quite a lot, Katie. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to talk about that you haven't discussed oh, today? Well, I'm just looking forward to you know follow Crystal's ideas and and, <laughs> and the home education thing is. You know, we were in clinic the other day and that lady was saying about her child and, you know. Yeah, and so I didn't catch that, actually, because I came in later yeah. um, in, in the afternoon. And, and that happy about what's going on in schools. And, mm. and there's a lot of people feel that way right now. They I spoke to someone today and they said that, you know, that we were all sort of communicated with the idea that, that something's going on and, and it's not, we're not safe and we're staying dull. And all of a sudden we now have to, send our children to school and a lot of people find that really difficult and it's not just parents the children themselves yeah. are, are really finding that um quite hard to deal with out there so there's a lot going on that it's understandable that they feel that way yeah it's, it's, it's difficult so i think it's something wonderful that you're going to be doing <laughs> um and not just you know educating your children yourself but also um you know, herbal medicine, and, and I think, Crystal, you're very good with children, I've noticed as a, as a student, you, you know, I always say, well, you know, and you did have that interest in eczema and asthma, didn't you, because of the, when you, so that and skin conditions and all of that, and I think that's, yeah. that, you have to look at your skin, that's wonderful now, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's wonderful, so you'll be able to share that knowledge, and yeah, it's, I hope so. that's fantastic, I'm really, you know, looking forward to seeing so anyone, kids or anything, really, uh, go and see yeah. Crystal. But I mean, herbal medicine is, is is just, it's a life thing, really. It's about being healthy, happy, feeling fitter. It's not just about taking tinctures and teas and mm. it's not all about, it's more sort of like, you know, it's life coaching to a certain extent. So yeah. I think that's really what we're trying to do, uh, Crystal and me. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's the whole picture. It, whole picture yeah. and ultimately you know as individuals we want to be happy um yeah. you know if, if you ask a child um what do they want to be and, and and they will tell you they want to be happy and I think we forget that as adults that you know ultimately what is it that we want to be um, and yeah. what we're striving for and and we want to be we want to be happy you know I think ultimately everybody wants that so um, we have to look after ourselves, you know, before we think about looking after others. I think we really need to yeah. look at ourselves and, and look after number one, because then we can then we can face the world. Don't love yourself and look after yourself and <laughs> find it hard to look after everybody else. So, yeah, really important. So health and happiness to all of everyone. That's good. Just going back quickly on yeah. your capsules. So um, oh. where can we, you know, if we're interested in these wonderful turret capsules that um stop stop our pain and aches and well, yeah exactly. where can we find them katie um well you can email me i i do um just answer the email you can email me my name is katie dobbyish that's spelled i've got a card oh i don't know how to write it but k-a-t-i-e-d-o-b-i-e-s-z and i do have a, a facebook page i don't know what, i think that's just my name actually katie dobbyish yeah. i've got a, a website live it's a long live love Herb. Oh, that's my email address. Live Love Herbs at btconnect.com. I do do site consultations. Um, I do have a practice in a place called Steinshead, which is in the middle of darkest Lincolnshire. But I do speak to people all over the country. But if you put my name, Katie, D O B I E S Z, medical herbalist, you'll see all my links. You can use them. Okay. So we, I know that you're on, you're on Facebook. Are you on Instagram as well, Katie? You yeah. are, aren't you? Yeah. Right. Um, oh. And um, we've got we've got your email. My Instagram is the best thing, isn't it? I think yeah. that's my name. Uh, yes, 
Um, I believe it is, yeah. So, um, yeah, so we can find Katie on Facebook and on Instagram. And anybody who would like to talk about their health, um, they could give me a contact me and we can have a chat. I do do online consultations um, and I'm happy to talk to you about the capsules I make if you if you want to try. You know, sometimes people get turmeric and, and they're not sure because some turmeric is different than others. Mine isn't just turmeric, it's got other things in it and they are very nice. Um, Unique um, formulation, isn't it? So it's uh, it's it's pretty pretty magical stuff, really. I, yeah, I I, know, if, I don't think I've ever if I've been in it for years, and I get very good results. Um, but I also make sort of herbal medicines. I mean, I've had some great results this year with with people with viruses going on and immune system protection, and that's been really good. I mean, I'm not not good, but I mean, it's, I'm very busy with that at the moment because yeah. it's quite. Yeah. A, do with herbs to keep your immune system you know really good and fight and so many of them there are there are so many of them um but it's just nice to talk to you Kristen. and i really wish you all the best you've been an amazing thank student you. Um, thank you that uh, means a lot and it you know i just it's just wonderful i'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to do and i just feel lovely you know to be part of your journey in herbal medicine it's really nice and thank you, Katie. Thank you so much for coming on and and spending your evening talking to me. Um, it's been great, and I I really appreciate you you coming here today and um, take sharing sharing all of your knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> the whole year, it's been a great year, hasn't it? You've... It's been an interesting, hard. No, not great. Really. I mean, your, your year group. Oh, your, right. Your colleagues in your year. It's been <laughs> oh, they no, they're fantastic. Great. Yeah. They are absolutely fantastic. We've dropped, so many of us have, have dropped, you know, I think because the, the difficulties this year, there's yeah. so many of us have gone, but we've, yeah. we're all there and we all communicate with each other and, and we've supported each other and um, and there's only, there's not a lot of us and, and it's been, you know, nice that we can all get on and, and help each other out, so... Yeah, friends think, forever, I think, in your year group, one study is the herbal medicine. It's, it, it's, it's great because we all come from different backgrounds as well. Um, and, you know, we, we all bring something to the group, I think. So I've, I've really enjoyed doing this and meeting those people. And, and I'm looking forward to getting them in the hotspot yes. um, at the point. I look forward to seeing it as well. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Katie. Take care. Take care.